Hey, how you doing, YouTube? It's your boy, Broken Art, back again with a, another installment of Bump Psychology, here with my guest, Cuba the Goat, and we're once again talking about the latest episode of Vice TV's Dark Side of the Ring, uh, Becoming Warrior episode, and, uh... I am the warrior. The power of the warrior will destroy you, Hulk Hogan. You will face my ultimate ability with the moves of the stars, who... Power the warrior, and he will body slam you into eternity. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before we get into it, let me introduce my guest, Cuba the Goat. Cuba the Goat, introduce yourself, brother. You already know it, man. It's Cuba the Goat here. Almost five thousand subscribers. Appreciate all Climbing. the love. Yes, Climbing. Climbing. Yes, sir. Five thousand, and uh, I am. I can keep saying this all the time. You already know who I am. And if you don't, you made the list. <laughs> All right. Before we get into this view, review, don't forget to like it, uh, share it, and subscribe to the channel. So, the Becoming a Warrior episode, I would say this is probably, after the Pillman episode, I would say this is probably my, my new favorite out of the season. Um, we're not that far into it, but this was a really, really good episode. Um, I remember when they first announced it, I was like, I don't really need a warrior documentary but after watching it it was like no nah, he's, he's a very interesting and very polarizing uh character um both inside of the wrestling world and outside of the wrestling world so it's the interesting take of how we handled this did you see the um the a e biography version i haven't seen it. i haven't seen any of uh and he stuff I want to. Yeah, same. I haven't I haven't watched it either because that was the thing. This episode from uh, Dark Side of the Ring was supposed to air before that, but then A and E changed it and had it earlier in the week. I think maybe like Monday or Tuesday that one aired, and then this aired on Thursday. And of course, you're gonna get a different perspective from two people talking about the same subject, especially when one is heavily uh, close and connected with the uh, WWE and having. Certain wrestlers in there, you know, your Hulk Hogan's and your Vince McMahon's and uh, even Sting, which I wish they could have got Sting for this, but they, they had Sting in the other one. That's why he wasn't able to be in this episode. So that was a bit of a missed opportunity, but, you know, it is what it is. But he's in AEW, though. So, uh, that, was I, film when he, no, this was his deal. I, no, this is, he just, I, they might have got to him first. I don't know. Either they got to him first or he probably didn't want to be connected to this particular project. I don't know, but. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, why did he go to, to the WWE one? But it is what it is. Um, so the episode focuses on the Ultimate Warrior, a.k.a. James Jim Helwig, who uh, was born in June uh, June 16th, 1959, and passed in uh, April 8th, 2014. Uh, he was a former bodybuilder and fitness fanatic who uh, he was a chiro studied to be a chiropractor, became a wrestler and he was known for his high intensity, his physical look, his crazy promos, and his big power moves. Yeah. He was a big star in the 80s, early 90s, and then kind of dwindled after that. You know, he was, as uh, I think it was Cornette who said, he was the one wrestler who got to like the highest of the highs and then immediately fell off just because of his his lack of ability and also his like uh, backstage, the, the way he was personally with the people in the business, it, it didn't quite work out. So. You didn't give a damn. Yeah, yeah. So, were you a are you a, are you a fan of the Ultimate Warrior? I really ain't watching, you know. Like, right. I, I was born in '94, so right. Like, yeah, that was definitely before our time. But like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the stuff I hear about him's an asshole. So I don't. Facts. But I do you like the Ultimate that... Warrior? Have you nah, looked at? Seen it? <laughs> no. Seen this? No. no I like no. the Ultimate Warrior character. I do. The person is different, but his character, his look, his yeah. unique style, his uh, his charisma, all of that was amazing. Um, yeah. he, he, you know, he's knocked on for not being a good wrestler, but he still had a certain charisma that got the fans behind him, which many of the wrestlers now today don't even, most of them don't even have like an A for that ability. So that's right. very uh, interesting side to, to uh his, you know, to his uh, his skills, I would say, or lack thereof. But that was his biggest skill was his his way to connect with the fan base. Um, so this episode starts off with what was her name, Terry, 
Oh, uh, Sherry Tyree, who was uh, Jim Helwig's ex wife, his first wife from uh, 1982 to 1991. She starts off by showing some old uh, pictures of Ultimate Warrior backstage pictures, talking about how they met. Uh, I, think, I think she ran into him at the gym, I believe it was. Um, and sh she met him as a bouncer. She was just, a, you know, surprised by his look because he was big jack dude he was as hell, yeah. yeah jack looked like looking like he walked out of a, a comic book and um she really helps to humanize jim from like because she she i like that she was like i know he was an asshole to other people but like what i knew of him he was very kind and kind of humorous and stuff like that he was still kind of a you know oddball but he was she like she just like humanizes him more which i i, I enjoyed that aspect of it and um, let's see. yeah, about ten years, yeah, yeah. And she knew him in the earlier days, but uh, he started out uh, bodybuilding. He be studying to be a chiropractor, and eventually he moved out to California to pursue a career in bodybuilding. And that's where he met one of his early friends in the business, Steve Borden, aka Sting. Anyway. I <laughs> It's Sting. Uh, and, they interrupt you. Yeah, now on AEW. Cause you know they be interrupting them. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. This tracks. <laughs> so they they work together, and then Steve convinces uh, Jim that like they should be wrestlers. And Jim wasn't really interested, but he was like, "Hey, I guess I can make some money because you know bodybuilding only you can only get but so far with the bodybuilding." So. They um they got into the wrestling business. They started to work for uh, Jerry Jarrett in Memphis at uh, Continental Wrestling Association. Jerry Jarrett being the father of Double J, uh, Jeff Jarrett, and um. Spend my day. Wait. Spend, I, don't I don't remember how that goddamn spend song goes. Spend my days working hard on the go, but the handle on the clock spinning too slow. I can't wait to be alone with my baby tonight. I'm surprised you yeah. remember that. It sounded like you cut out for me, but I'm, I'm got <laughs> by Bruce Pritchard. But uh, yeah. so yeah, they worked there. They were a tag team. They were a tag team known as the Freedom Fighters, which I believe it was like a big group of them originally. And then they kept Jim and Steve because they were the best looking ones, and they were just these two big jack guys. Uh, they didn't. They weren't good at wrestling, but you know, they just started out and. Uh, eventually, yeah, like yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, it was more like American Gladiators type deal, but um, they eventually they eventually got rid of them because they weren't that good, and they sent them down to uh, Mid South Wrestling at uh, UWF with Bill Watts, and they became a tag team known as the Blade Runners. And this was a huge, yeah, this was a huge deal because this was when they changed their names. Also, uh, Jim became Rock. And Steve became Sting, and they both kind of started their obsession. Yeah, Rock. That was, that was his name, Rock and Sting, and that started their obsession with face paint. They both started wearing the face paint. They were these like heel tag team, and that was when they started to get a little bit better. Steve uh, Sting was definitely more willing to learn. As for Jim, was much more hard headed and harder to to work with definitely relied more on his uh his physical appearance because he would he would get pops because i mean look at the guy you know he can do a simple jet. A yeah yeah he was a jet yeah, exactly he could do a friggin uh body slam and then like everyone's gonna lose their shit even though they were heels and <laughs> what <laughs> roids oh she, yeah well i mean yeah every okay yes they were all on roids <laughs> they they all did the drugs whether they want to admit it or not, but yes, they would, especially him and, yeah. and Sting was pumping the Roy's very hard and the iron. Yeah, Sting was big as hell in the pitches, but he yeah. was as big as Warrior. He wasn't as big, but he was still big because Sting definitely trimmed down later on in his career because he couldn't keep, you know, that mass up. But Sting, uh, but, you know, Warrior was, yeah, fucking tank. So he looked, he looked like he would be a little smaller too in his WWF run. Just a little smaller. Just a little smaller. Yeah, yeah. He got a little. He had to bodybuild. Right. Yeah. He had to get him, like in his wrestling shape so he could still you know move and shit. But um, so eventually they split blaze. Um, I know their friendship was on the rocks at the time. They because they do have audio of Jim kind of talking 
in a way, kind of talking shit on Sting, where he was like, you know, Sting was more willing to be handled, as I was, I was more focused on myself, so I didn't really think that much about what he wanted to do with the business. I just wanted, you know, money and stuff, so, you know, shit like that. And so, he leaves, and he leaves from the UWF and goes to World Class Championship Wrestling down in uh, Dallas, working with the Von Erics, which if you've seen the previous episode about the Von Erics, you know what that deal is all about, so... And this was a big moment where he becomes the Dingo Warrior, which... Uh, Dingo Berry! Yeah. <laughs> and he was managed by, uh, <laughs> he was managed by uh, Gary Hart, and then later uh, Percy Pringle III, um, a.k.a. Paul Bearer. And um, he, this was where his look, he started wearing different, yeah, yeah, there you go, started wearing different face paint. Um, they, they talk about, uh, Sherry, his wife, talks about, and the, she was the one that kind of, Gave the prototype design for the Ultimate Warrior with the tassels and the and the uh, wristbands and stuff like that. I thought that was kind of cool. And uh, he was still hard to work with, but he was a heel. But he was still getting those pops because you know he's a big guy doing cool shit. People liked it. Yeah. What do you say? I don't know if he did. But I, like, I, I rephrase. I, I don't know if anyone caught that. What did you say? I said was, snorting coke. Oh, snorting. Oh yeah, they was definitely. <laughs> There's no way he could do those promos. He was even his wife hints at that there was some drug use, but she was like, she never saw anything. But anyway, um, a damn lie. Well, she probably didn't see anything. I don't know. <laughs> she probably didn't. He was out on the road. But anyway, so yeah. eventually he was getting popular, um, and he caught the attention of one Vincent Kennedy McMahon, and uh, he eventually gets hired at the WWF. Vince loves that look. He loves you. We know the story. We know he loves the big bodybuilders. And this guy was the Roman Reigns of his day. Uh, Vince was just absolutely in love with his body. And uh, Vince morphs him from the Dingo Warrior until the into the Ultimate Warrior. And this the is the Ultimate Warrior. The Ultimate Warrior. I will just crush you with the strength and the power of a million warriors. Energy flowing into my body. Anyway, um. So, I like yeah, <laughs> hey, he's, he's pretty good. His, his promos are not that hard to do. They just you just got to say something about weird magic and power and you're good. Um, so, you know, this is where he starts the, the rope shaking and the frantic movements and the crazy promos. And of course, the fire, fire ass theme song that he has. <laughs> Fire. Fire. But he would always but he was so big he would come out and do all that movement and as soon as the bell rings, he's already tired and he can do like three moves. You know, he could already do just four moves. But now he's tired, he can only do three. So it's like it was cool, but you know, his matches had to be short and quick. Um but Awesome. Yeah, awesome shit. Great look. Um, some of the stuff they didn't mention was him. He won the IC champ. Yeah, I think he was only in the company for like three, maybe. He wasn't in the company long. Maybe like three, four months. And then he beat the Honky Tonk Man in uh, 27 seconds for the uh, the uh, IC, the Intercontinental Championship at the first SummerSlam. Classic moment. Classic moment. See, I thought about rewatching all the old stuff. Mm -hmm. like, right, well, I looked this. Really... Yeah, 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 yeah. I looked it up on. Uh, I was. I'm getting this from Wikipedia, but I, I, I forgot that it was at the first SummerSlam. I remember that because that's an iconic thing because that was like a record that the Honky Tonk Man had for years until I think they beat it with. Uh, I want to say the Miz, or like, I don't know, Ziggler maybe. When someone had the belt and they lost it really quick. I, I don't know. It, I feel like it was the Miz, maybe. But anyway. Wait, the Intercontinental? Yeah, the Intercontinental right. belt. Losing it, like, super quick. But anyway. That'd have been Miz, man. Yeah, right? That sounds like Miz. But yeah, that was the iconic moment. Um, of course, they talk about WrestleMania six, Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior, which is, in my opinion, one of the best matches that WWE has ever had. Have you ever seen that match? Really? Yes. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that. If you get the chance, watch Hogan versus Warrior. That shit is awesome. The crowd, I, I the workers really bro, how they bro. The crowd is insane. The energy of that match is insane. When they do the crisscross and then they bump into each other and they do it again and they bump into each other, it's, I swear to God, it's fucking awesome. 
It's old school, but it's fucking dope and shit, man. I heard another great match again. Was it Macho Man? Yes. His two best matches. Two best matches. Yes. I was about to get into that with him and Macho Man a little bit later. But, um, yeah, he was the guy that Vince picked to take Hogan's spot. Because Hogan had been the champ for like a decade. And Vince wanted... Yeah, yeah. He had the belt for a long ass time. That's why he was the top guy. Yeah, it was a decade. Yeah, it was essentially a decade. No, it wasn't four years. No, no, it was not four years. It was like eight. It was like eight or nine. No, 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 no. He was on top for like eight or nine. He, he, no, he was on top for like eight or nine years. But um, oh, I thought you meant the belt. So you, you talking about just his rise? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the top guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At that, at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you know, he wins the championship belt, and his wife talks about how like you know his home life started to change. That's when he's being more out on the road. Um, he's, you know, as she mentioned, he was altered, which we hinted at the cocaine uh, use. And, uh, of course, Hogan would get his revenge years later at Halloween Havoc 1998, which was something they didn't talk about. We'll save that for later. So, um... Oh, that um, that's one of the worst matches yeah. ever. Um, so, we get, you know, we get inner shots of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we get uh, different shots. We get uh, Jim Cornette, who's, uh, you know, a former uh, manager and producer at WWE and w- WCW. Uh, he hates the Ultimate Warrior. Um, he hates him with that. He hates him with a passion. He comments that uh, the Ultimate Warrior... We're not Vince. I like Vince Russo fast. He's close. He's like, he's definitely below Russo, but he's still high on the list. <laughs> um, he, he talks about how, how Jim... Uh, uh, Ultimate Warrior didn't respect the business. Um, he talks about how Vince was smart enough to amplify Warrior's strengths and hide most of his uh, weaknesses. And um, he mentions how Warrior got had a match with Bobby Heenan and like re-injured his neck and was very un um, uh, what's the word unconcerned about it. He was just like oh you know whatever type about it. And they had him and Heenan had huge heat throughout their careers. Um, I remember when. Right. Yeah, yeah, I remember when Heenan, because Heenan would talk shit about Warrior, and when Heenan had cancer, Warrior had mentioned like, "I hope he fucking dies." Something to the to the to equivalent of like, "Yeah, I hope ah. he dies." Oh yeah, yeah, no, he was going in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He they did not like each other, so um, yeah, and uh, for a video message, I remember seeing those in a little video. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can still find them on YouTube. Yeah, he had a whole bunch of rants later on that's shitting on people in the business. And other people got videos about them shitting on him. So, you know, it goes both ways. Um, yeah, what Jake did at the, you know. We'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get into it. Uh, Jim Ross pops up. Uh, WCW, WWE, uh, AW commentator, uh, producer. Uh, he talks about how he met Warrior back in the UWF. And he was like the worst. He was like the the worst, like, uh, capable wrestler he had ever seen. You know, he was just big, but couldn't really work in the ring. Um, and he talks about how he was arrogant, and difficult to train. Um, and then also we talk about uh, Jake Roberts, Jake the Snake Roberts, wrestler. And yeah, he talks about how Warrior was a jerk backstage. Damn uh-huh. Lay off that shit, Jake. You got COPD. Why are you still smoking them cigarettes, bro? Hey, got to do what you, your body used to, man. But um, he talks about how like he, he was the Warrior was hard to work with and how he was a jerk both backstage and in the ring. Um, yeah. But he does talk about, well, they, they don't mention the, the the feud that they had, which was um, after he was starting the feud, Ultimate Warrior starting the feud with Undertaker. Uh, Jake was working with him and then turns on him, and then that was going to start a feud between Jake the Snake and Ultimate Warrior, which was a cool storyline. Um, and he talks about how, you know, the uh, Warrior got a little harder to deal with. And Vince was getting tired of his bullshit. So, at a certain point, Warrior lost the World Heavyweight Championship to Sergeant Slaughter at the Royal Rumble uh, due to an interference by the Macho King, Randy Savage, which led to their match at WrestleMania 7, the career-ending match between those two. Awesome match. That's my favorite Warrior match, him and the Macho Man, even though Macho Man hits that man with, like, I think it's like three or five elbow drops and does not, and then Warrior still kicks out, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> whatever, but it's still an awesome ass match. Uh, so basically, they you know Vince is having trouble with him. Warrior starts no showing things. He uh, makes this letter 
to Vince where he's like, hey, I'm not going to show up at these shows unless I start getting the same payment and treatment as uh, Hulk Hogan. And Vince is like, bitch, don't you dare threaten me. So he, you know, starting to take the belt off of him, starting to, you know, lose trust in him. Once Vince loses trust in the person, he'll take him off the show. He still does that to this day. You know, certain wrestlers, no matter how big, you are. No matter how big or what you look, if you, if Vince starts to lose trust in you, 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 you in the shitter. So, um, uh, he did that with somebody recently. Keith Lee? Might be. What's the situation? Well, we'll forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Jake the Snake is uh, pissed that he didn't get his, his uh, have his uh, great heel run with uh, Ultimate Warrior while he was the champion. Because, you know, he was the, everyone had their runs with the champion, especially with Hogan. And it was finally up for Jake. He was at the time to get his run with Warrior, but then Warrior started fucking up and that fucked up his paper, so he hated, uh, you know, the Ultimate Warrior. Mm, excuse me. He hated the Ultimate Warrior for years for that. And um, so uh, there was a whole thing where he was demanding better treatment. Um, he started no-showing. Vince honored a new contract in order for the Warrior to appear at SummerSlam and then immediately suspended him once he showed up. And then that led to some... Uh, uh, legal battles between WWF and Ultimate Warrior because he was like, well, you gave me this contract, but then you reneged, and they were battling that for years. Um, he tried to quit, but he, you know, he was still on the contract in 1992, and then that's when he was still hanging in the business. But then, uh, you know, he he eventually was fired due to bad timing because at the time he was gone, he came back. Um, Vince and the company was under scrutiny for the heavy uh, steroid use and boy had failed a drug, t a drug test so that was kind of looking bad on the company and uh, yeah yeah so eventually they let him go and um, we we missed that was a great match the great tag team match we never got to see which was the ultimate maniacs versus uh, Ric Flair and Razor Ramon at the Survivor Series, where he, if you ever see the promo, you can see the promo, but they're both wearing the red and the yellow. It's Ultimate Warrior and and, and Macho Man. Fucking oh. insane, insane promo. Check it out. And it's going to be this awesome match between Ric Flair and Razor Ramon. And then Rick, Ultimate Warrior didn't show up. And he got replaced oh. by Mr. Perfect. And that was like Mr. Perfect's like baby face turn. And so Warrior was kicked out. Of, he was fired from the com company. And then from like 1992... To 1996, he wrestled at various small promotions. Um, they talk about how Jim Helwig legally changed his name to Warrior as a way to keep his Ultimate Warrior brand for potential merchandise and uh, biz other businesses. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. That's exactly what Ryback did. Exactly, exactly the same thing Ryback did. Um, similar, but on a much smaller scale. Um, but... Uh, so better, work. better worker yes technically yes he is a better worker than than uh ultimate warrior i'll give you that um yeah. so they talk about him and the wife they split up there was that, that great moment where he was champ and she was talking about how she was worried about him she calls up on him and no call she calls police she calls him back later she hears a woman in the background she's oh. devastated so she's like oh. We're getting the, you know, she does some 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 searching, finds that he's got a day planner with all his various uh, ring rats in it. So she's just like, nah, fuck all of this. I'm done. We're yeah, divorcing. Man, this man got a female for every freaking city that he went to. Hey, that's what it was I'm back in the day. Keep it at home. Yeah, that was dumb you for don't have a pad? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I don't know why he kept it at home, but he should have kept that shit like somewhere else. I don't know where, but like, she, just... hey, look, she, no, she wouldn't have found out if. if if the, if the thing was there, she would have never knew. Never would have really? known. She wouldn't have known. She would have had. She would have had concrete proof. So he he kind of fucked up on that one. But um, she she does talking about she does talk about how like he he was obsessed with the merchandise and how he really loved the fans. Even though he wasn't that good, he felt like he should get paid more because the fan like he I guess he was like hey when I come out the people cheer so that should equal more money but that's not exactly how it works but that was his you know, thought process because he was so conceited about his, uh, his, you know, his spot, but he was also, she, she, she does, you know, talk about how he grew up insecure because 
he um you know his dad left and he wanted a father figure he kind of viewed vince as a father figure but vince was like no you're an employee but if you start fucking with me i'm gonna have to let you go and that's you know exactly what happened and um so you know he dealt with all of that stuff um she, I thought she was the best uh, when they interviewed that. Show. She really was. She was. She was definitely the MVP of this episode. She she gave a lot of uh, great stuff. I love the bit where she talks about how they would. He started a, a a gym. Well, he moved out to Arizona. He did own a gym in yeah. Arizona, and they were working out there, and they were still kind of hanging out occasionally. But then that's how he met his his new wife, uh, Dana Warrior, at the, um, is her last name Warrior? Did he change his last name to Warrior? Well, anyway, Dana. Yeah, I think yeah, Warrior. Is Dana Warrior, right? Okay, yeah, okay. So Dana, he met his wife there, and I think she had met her husband. I don't know if she met her new husband at the gym, but she had met, she had a new husband. And she talks about how there was a moment where Jim was like, hey, we're cool. I'm sorry for, you know, treating you bad, but we can't. I can't have you at the gym anymore. I found someone new and I can't, you know, be disrespectful to the wife, my new, you know, my new wife and all of that. And um, yeah. I thought that was a very interesting thing where he was respectful enough to like break it off with her that way. And um, yeah, that was, that was a very, that was a very uh, inter- interesting moment. So yeah, cool, cool moment. Now they do talk about the few times Vince throughout the the nineties tried to get Warrior back into the business. Yeah, no, he came back at WrestleMania, right? Squad yeah, that's there it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So Jim Cornette tells the story of it was it was Jim Cornette, Vince McMahon, Jr. and Bruce Prichard. They went out to uh, Arizona to visit the Warrior to potentially yeah. rehire him. It was a lot of rambling, but it went nowhere. He was trying to push his merchandise and his comic book. Which that shit is insane. His uh, distrucity comic and his phrases that he made and he wanted to trademark. It was a, it was a whole thing. It was a it was a whole lot of yeah, it was a whole lot of crazy thing. The distrucity of the warrior. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the comic book did look fire though. I ain't gonna lie. It was crazy. It did look nice. Yeah, but it was a lot of ramblings of his manifestos. But um, so I'm talking about the cover art. Yeah. Oh yeah, the cover <laughs> art was fire. Yeah, yeah, the cover art was fire. But um. So that didn't work out. Then in '96, they uh, he comes back. He beats uh, Hunter Hearst Hemsley at WrestleMania 12. Um, the match was trash. It didn't really work for the new era of wrestling. It was still the same old shit from you know the '80s, and it just didn't really mesh that well. Um, and so Vince started to realize, like you know what, maybe we should stop fucking with this guy. So they kind of stopped trying to hire him uh, for the most part. And uh, Connect reads the letter of Vince that Vince gave to him when he fired him from the WWF that first time. Um, I don't remember all of it, but it was a very interesting letter. Basically, Vince saying, uh, "You done fucked up now, buddy, and uh, I'm gonna have to let you go." Exactly. So, uh, so now one of the things they didn't talk. Well, I saved that towards the end, or should I talk about it now? I'm, de- I'm debating. What is, what is it? I'm trying to. Okay, so. They had this man in the episode. He was completely useless. Eric Bischoff, um, now sir, former WCW president, podcaster. Um, he was in the episode. He had like two lines in the episode, but he was in the episode. Exactly. Um, which was a dis- was a detriment, I think, because there was no talks about him talking about Ultimate Warrior and WCW, because that shit was hot garbage. So at a certain point, Warrior got signed by WCW because... Hogan wanted another opponent. Also, he wanted to get his win back for, you know, losing all those years ago at WrestleMania 6. So, also, Warrior comes into the w, uh, WCW. Um, he, there's, uh, he, when he first appeared, he had his promo, which was supposed to be, like, seven minutes. But it, or, but it went for, like, 27 minutes. And, like, they had what? to, yeah, 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 yeah. He just, he just kept talking. Uh, they Warrior? Had to, yeah, Ultimate Warrior, yeah, yeah. They had to re-edit the show because he went out there and he talked too fucking long. Um, on Monday Nitro, there was one of the wrestling shows where he had a he came through a trap door in the ring with his angle. Yeah. It was it was it was the NWO versus the um, One Warrior Nation faction, where it was literally the NWO versus Ultimate Warrior, but he's a faction, but it's just himself. It makes no fucking sense. Um, that infamous joint where um, Hulk Hogan's looking in the mirror and then like 
Ultimate Warrior is in the mirror, but then he's not behind him. It was, it was a lot of weird shit. So, um, anyway, that was... This is WCW. It's all dumb. like I said. This is shit that wasn't in the episode. So okay, there yeah. was a, there was a thing where there was a match uh, earlier in the show. Ultimate Warrior came through a trap door in the ring, but that trap door was still in the ring. And David Boy Smith almost paralyzed himself by tripping or stepping almost like stepping into that trap door in the ring. It was a lot. It was a lot of bullshit. And of course, they had that match at Halloween Havoc, uh, which is one of the worst matches ever. Uh, that was the match where Hulk Hogan tried to throw the fireball at Ultimate Warrior, but he ended up blowing it in his face. It's fucking terrible. His own face? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that infamous clip where he's having the match and he's trying to light the fireball, but he like it lights too quickly and it's like blows in his face a little bit. It's fucking. It's a bad match. Can you sell it? He, he, they they it? tried to sell it. It was it was bad. It was this is it's a bad match. But Ultimate uh, Warrior loses in that match because Hulk Hogan had to get his win back over uh, the ultimate warrior because that's how hogan that's how hogan gets down so um yeah oh yeah oh yeah 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 he was he was full nwo hollywood hogan at that time both of them were smaller because of the because the because of the um the you know the roid uh yeah exactly because of the the roid uh the steroid uh trials and all that so you know hogan slimmer warrior slimmer they're not as big as they were were they back in the 80s but anyway, that was some of the nonsense that happened with him during the 90s. Yeah. Alone should be a dark side of the ring. I know they had a steroid trial, right? Or are they have it this season? They they're, have- they're doing that this season. The steroid okay, trial is going to be this. Yeah, yeah. Because Hogan did, you know, I'm like, why does he look so skinny? That proves that he was on that stuff. Oh, yeah. He, he never, well, he lied and then that kind of fucked up a case. Video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that kind of actually helped out Vince because he lied. Because the defense, it was some crazy... Anyway, they'll get into it in the episode. Anyway, so he did all of that crazy shit in the 90s. And then he kind of officially, like, or mainly retired. And, um, you know, he he also, besides doing his businesses and running his gym, he also wanted to be a motivational speaker. But initially he became, like, a big uh, right-wing speaker talking about, you know conservative views because this is this is the height of the bush of the bush iraq war area uh era if you remember it some of you young kids watching this might not remember that before your time but it was if you if you thought trump was crazy when we were kids we had bush not quite as crazy compared to trump but it was still that type of sentiment and uh i'm not saying a thing because i don't give a f- I don't give a fuck. This is my goddamn channel. Anyway, you. so... Well, I'm on it, goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a goddamn... I got subscribers that might like it. I'm not saying... So whoever's watching this, I'm not saying a thing. You feel me? Anyway... I'm trying to get 5,000 here. Anyway, Ultimate Warrior, he was... You know, he was very Fox News heavy. He was very conservative. Very anti-gay uh, statements. Very... Oh. Uh, very racial, racist statements, which they do oh. have some of his stuff in the episode where he was talking about uh, the black kids are, you know, less less than human. They're acting like monkeys because, you know, they're oh. hanging with our white children, you know, that type of shit. So, uh, you know, you know, the, you know the vibe. So anyway, uh, they got those clips of him talking crazy. And that was his life. He was also just doing a lot of shoot interviews on his own or, you know, ass with people and he would talk shit about everyone in the business, whether it was Hogan, Macho Man, Kevin Nash, Vince McMahon, Jake the Snake. I mean, anyone he wanted, Bobby Heenan, Sting a little bit, like whoever he wanted to talk about, he was just shitting on everybody. So, I mean, me if I was lying. Yeah, right. And he had, he was consistently suing the WWE for, uh, you know, rights and trying to get certain things, doing certain things. They would sue him. He would sue them. You know, and uh, Ultimate Warrior was like kept out of the, the business for years. Like they would never talk about him, except for that one DVD that they did, uh, the Ultimate Destruction of the, the the self destruction of the Ultimate Warrior, where they basically just did a whole documentary shitting on the Ultimate Warrior, <laughs> like just straight shitting on him. Like they was like, hey. What do you feel about the Ultimate Warrior? Just tell us your tell us your feelings. They weren't like directly saying shit on him. They were just like, "Hey, tell us what you think about this guy." Made into a documentary. It was a big. It was a one of their top sellers. 
they got sued for that. Exactly. Ultimate Warrior sued them for that. But um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, How but much he, he I don't think he did. Oh, maybe he did. I don't fucking. I don't know the, the results of those cases. But shockingly, uh, in 2014, he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame for WrestleMania 30. Which I remember when that came, I was like, wait, what? Like, holy shit. You know, that was a big deal. And, um, what? No, you said 20, 2014. Right? Yeah, 2014. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and Jake the Snake talks about how he was there and he was had a roll of quarters in his hand because he was ready to whoop. Uh, he beat up on the Ultimate Warrior, which I don't know how much I believe in. I do believe he would have said something to him. I don't know if he actually would have hit the man, but, um. Yeah. Man, crazy. The man's smoking while I got COPD. I mean, yeah, 14. I guess he had just started to get his life together around that time. But, yeah, anyway, um, Warrior sees him and he, like, apologizes for, like, his, his actions towards him and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, he was going around making amends with the other people that were there, which, like I said, is commendable for him to be, you know, being nice and also being like, look, I was a, an asshole. I'm sorry. Da, da, da. Very interesting. Um, the next night he appeared on Monday Night Raw and he cut like a thankful and heartfelt promo to the, to the fans. And it was like a, in a way, like a weird, like farewell to the fans. And then like the next, a couple hours after that, he died of a heart attack. And I remember was, that. Too. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Why did this so wrong? Yeah, man. It's like, that was a very eerie promo where he's like, you know, the warrior, comes to an end and he has to, yeah, yeah he has to come to his final heartbeat and all of this shit it's like oh wow that's kind of interesting and then the next night or the hours later dead he predicted his own death he predicted his own death i mean his wife did mention early on that his his family's the men in his family suffered from like heart disease and they all died at a at an earlier age similar to what um prime pillman's was in his family as well so you know he but even though he was clearly on drugs and stuff that didn't persuade him to not do that but you know he, he lived i would never do that shit bro. yeah he i mean he 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 lived well into his early 50s and then you know passed away but it's it's a weird that was just a weird uh situation how that happened you know wwe i think that was the year of or maybe the next year in the 2k game they had the you know the ultimate warrior cover and he was now in the video games and shit like non-stop like they you they they use any and every opportunity now to use his likeness because they did not use it for all those years um you know they got the warrior the warrior award which is like for like charity and stuff like that i look it sounds nice but coming from that guy hey it should be named after him name it the shag gas bar award that's what i say (sighs) i agree with you I yeah. agree with you, but they're not going to do that. Um, yeah, they're not. So, yeah, he passes away. And that's essentially the end of the episode where everyone's kind of like, yeah, you know, he had a quick rise, quick fall, kind of an asshole, but it's kind of sad how he went out. And that's essentially, you know, how they ended the episode. Um, from what I heard, the, the A&E biography was a little more positive, a little more glossing over the darker side of, of Jim Helwig, which I'm not surprised by. Um but you, you know you can check out either one um but that that's essentially this episode uh really really solid episode especially for an episode that i didn't think i was going to be all that interested in they did a good job did a real good job it wasn't that bad at all i enjoyed it yeah. it was way better than last week's yes yeah, yes it was it was definitely better than the collision in korea because yeah but um yeah that's uh yeah, was, uh oh go ahead no 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 go ahead go ahead go ahead uh, I was saying, to, I was about to say, to be honest with you, I may end up picking that damn drug addicted bank robber over this one. To be honest with you, really? You go like, Nick Gage? Cold, it was a lot, man. That dude's crazy as hell, but that was good though. You gonna go Nick Gage? Nick got all of it. Yeah. Wow. It was a lot that they unpacked in that one. True. That is true. I like the Warrior more, so I'm gonna go with this one over that one. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, so uh, really good episode. Can't wait for the next episode. This is the one I've been waiting for. Uh, the one where they talk about Jacob Snake's dad. That shit gonna be wild. That's I'd like to pass Nick Gage 
and Brian Pilsen. This is going to be a wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is going to be a wild ass episode, boy. I've been looking for this yeah. one. So, um, but yeah, that's all we got to say about the Becoming Warrior episode of uh, Vice TV's Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. I'm going to sign off now. Cuba, let the people know where they can find you. Find me at Cuba the Goat on YouTube and also Cuba the Goat Gaming. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Give me a 200, please. My God. A brother's trying to get 200 followers on Instagram. Instagram's weird. Where I'm at. What? Yeah. yeah, Instagram's weird. I, I don't get it anymore. Um, you do certain things and they don't... I, I don't know the, the trick on Instagram either. But... Yeah. But yeah, uh, 200, and uh, if you don't, oh well, somehow you will be added to the list. All right, like all I right. Like I said earlier. All right, now I'm your boy, Brogan Nark. You can follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, TikTok, Twitch, Brogan Nark. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Peace. <laughs> Everywhere, I'm there. Just, just hit the follow, goddamn.